The full private beta of The Division 2 is live and kicking, letting developer Massive road test its netcode ahead of its March launch. The good news? We can now sample the game at our leisure, at least this weekend, to get a sense of its technical direction. Today I'm digging into the PlayStation 4 machines, base and pro on an early build, similar to the one I saw at Ubisoft's preview event. Expect a gorgeous opener outside the White House, a grassy battle zone filled with volumetric effects, parallax map terrain, and handily, lots of explosives dotted around too. We've moved away from the Manhattan setting of the first game, but what technical evolution can we see on PS4 systems in the sequel? Now before I kick off, a quick point on the nature of this beta. If it's anything like the Xbox One X code, it will be an offshoot build, designed for exhibitions and network testing. It's far from perfect. In fact, Ubisoft openly admits it in a note at the start, explaining that playing for around 3 hours can make it prone to locking up. If the X build I tested earlier is anything to go by, that equates to frame rate troubles too, at which point a restart fixes it. Not ideal, but realistically, it's something you'd expect to be fixed by launch. Equally on the first day of this beta, I've been kicked off the servers numerous times, but again it's something I'd expect will be fixed based on the first division's performance. So what's the setup? Well, this beta is nearly a staggering 50GB in size, depending on the machine, which is on the level with the full install of the first game. You get to experience the opening two missions, end game content, and a new improved Dark Zone with 4v4 PvP. There's certainly a lot in here. The systems are improved and there's plenty of scope for improving skills and weapons at a base area. Still, and despite the breadth of stuff to do on an early build, I was surprised to find the game runs really well with a 30fps target, especially on base PS4 as I'll cover later on. Washington Hotel. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about image quality first. Now, I went in expecting the changes to its engine to perhaps have had an effect on base PS4 and certainly the enhanced Pro model. After all, the Division patched in Pro and X support long after release to get higher native resolutions, reflections and shadows. Factor in the new grass tech and an overall change in setting and it's reasonable to expect some moving of goalposts so to speak when it comes to image quality. I tested the game on the base PS4 first though and the general turnout is much like the original, a native 1920x1080 and not too much to note besides. It's almost certainly a dynamic 1080p as with the original, but as yet I've not noticed any major drops under that number. The Snowdrop engine is very much built with this in mind. There's a form of temporal reconstruction going on with the edges which uses data from previous frames to create a clearer picture on the current frame. All of which means, settling the camera on a point will resolve a sharp pixel match for the console's chosen output res. Once you start moving that camera though, the illusion can break, but you'd be hard pressed to spot it. For base PS4 it's rarely needed and basically means edges are nicely filtered, removing aliasing. The only exception really is those highlighted edges on doors, which bypasses a lot of the TAA in effect, leaving a rough pixelated look. Still elsewhere it does look great. Next we have PS4 Pro, and this is where that reconstruction really shines. Just as with the original, Pro works with a dynamic resolution that tries to simulate 3840x2160. That's if you hold the camera position completely dead still. And so, if you have a 4K set, you'll see every stair step matches with each pixel on your display. But the true native number is obviously lower than that, once in motion. In practice, I've seen 3072 by 1728 come up as a more regular number. That's 1728p on average, though if the first game is anything to go by, 1800p is the top native target you can expect. Meanwhile, the lowest figure I've seen in this build is 2458 by 1382 during the initial battle outside the White House. The design of the Snowdrop engine is among the better I've seen for disguising these subtle res changes. It's also a growing trend as this generation bears on. EA's Frostbite engine does it convincingly too, as we've seen in the recent Anthem, not only obscuring the native res in motion, but also in simulating a 4K on PS4 Pro through tricks like checkerboarding. There's a host of techniques to get the most from these machines, but for the real deal at 4K in The Division 2, it looks like Xbox One X is the most consistent at hitting 3840x2160. <laughs> 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 
With the luxury of playing PS4 and Pro today, visual comparisons are also on the menu. So here goes, I've matched everything side by side with time of day also synced up to within an hour. That difference between a native 1080p on PS4 and an average of 1728p on Pro sticks out most of all on tree outlines in the distance. Object detail, cloth physics and texture mapping are identical when you get up close to anything, so really it's about how the image resolves as a whole, and the sharpness PS4 Pro is able to achieve. The Division 2's push for more foliage tends to bring this out better than the original 2, where mostly you get a sense of base console limits on dangling power lines, but here it's more outstanding. Ok, let's press forward to look at reflections. This first run shows a form of real-time reflections from objects in this waterlogged patch. See how the deer gives an effective mirror image on each machine as it runs past. What's curious is, this reflection appears to combine with cube mapping for the environment behind it. That's a pre-baked texture, but one that shows up differently on PS4 and Pro. The enhanced machine is more accurate to the scene overall, especially since the base model shows a huge tree in the water that's simply not there above ground. If it is a cube map then, updating the base PS4's reflection with a more perspective correct texture could bring it up to par. Still, the effect is rather nice, and not entirely at odds with the scene. Effects, shadows, terrain pop in. Everything is laid bare here, and to be frank, it looks like PS4 Pro inherits the base machine settings on most fronts, barring the resolution. There is some extra pop in on the base console in spots, but this is variable even in cutscenes which gives us a granular look at small figurines and character close-ups show a depth of field effect that runs at almost a matching quality level. Looking back at the original Division, this is perhaps expected, but also a little underwhelming for those hoping to get more from Pro. There's still time for something more ambitious to hit the system from a visual settings perspective, but for this base relief, it's mainly amounting to a res bump. Arguably the more enticing console comparison will be between the extremes, the Xbox One X versus the S model. But as a cursory look, this really does suggest the Snowdrop engine's focus is on consistency between platforms. From Massive's perspective, this surely streamlines development on every machine, and looking to frame rate performance next, there is a payoff. So performance tests across base PS4 and Pro show up some unexpected results. With our access to the endgame side of the beta on its first day, we can at least focus on the siege on the Grand Washington Hotel, where 30 FPS is mostly held. As a stress test there's plenty to work with, explosives, finely detailed dining rooms and corridors filled with flanking AI. Along with the opening White House battle, it's a solid workout for the engine, but really it turns out base PS4 doesn't deviate too much at all from 30 FPS. I scanned in the entirety of my capture session into the tools, and there's barely a frame drop or torn frame to show for it. Potentially there's more scope for drops as we involve 3 extra players and crank our level up to 30 with more firepower. But still with what we have in the first two missions, we're unleashing a lot on the scene, and the return is surprisingly positive. I haven't run into any stability issues either, suggested by Ubisoft in its notes. Rather the main issue really is that the server kept throwing me out of the game itself periodically. On the whole PS4's performance level is in line with what I saw in the first division though. Next up there's the curious case of the PS4 Pro. The same scenes are tackled, but unlike the base model, this one shows more screen tear across the screen as we play through. Now it's still largely 30fps, but blighted by a less stable image once the firefights get heavier. Mainly I spotted it in that grassy opening fight with lots of volumetric effects which cues Pro to render incomplete frames out. You'll notice it, but it's more a way to minimise actual frame drops or stutters. It never intrudes on the flow of play, as an actual drop might, which is really good news. Hostile radio intercepted. So is PS4 Pro performing worse than the base model? Well based on this beta yes, there is more tearing certainly in my experience, all of which suggests Pro's dynamic resolution scaling might need a few frames in between each res change to acknowledge that change in load. Even so those pockets of tears aren't too egregious and only flare up in select spots. If we're looking for encouraging signs of performance at this early stage, the beta is certainly giving it so far. Again be warned though that this build could struggle if you make it that far without a server crash if you play several hours into it non-stop. From what I've seen though, it is clear selling in these opening stages. Where to next? Well as far as the visual setup goes on PS4 systems, the base is getting several things right. 
Even after three further years working with the Snowdrop engine, the resolution isn't taking a dramatic hit compared to the last game. In support of a new setting and features, there's no backward step. What I would like to see by launch though is a distinctive new feature for people invested in PS4 Pro. Ok, let's assume 60fps is off the cards. Even a lower resolution, high graphics settings mode would do. Keeping it at 30fps, this could bump the quality settings closer to PC's max presets, while dropping Pro to 1080p. We have the hardware, and giving us the choice in how to use it would only be a good thing. But with that, we're out of time for this quick look. More to come on The Division 2, but please let us know what you'd like to see in the future. In the meantime, if you did enjoy this video, please feel free to give us a like or even subscribe to our channel. And hit the bell to receive notifications as any new video lands. Check out our Patreon for the 4K source file to this video, and contact us on Twitter for any thoughts or musings you might have. But until next time, thanks for watching.